on November 10th, 1483, in Saxony, Germany, Martin Luther was born. The son of a poor coal miner, he grew up observing his father's poverty, and it motivated him to become wealthy, so he pursued a career as a lawyer. In 1501, he entered the University of Erfurt, and in 1504, near the end of his studies, he was caught in a lightning storm so severe it caused him to rashly pray and promise God he would become a monk if he lived through the storm, which he did. True to his word, Luther withdrew from law school and in 1505 entered St. Augustine's monastery where he obtained a bachelor's degree in theology. He continued to study and earned his doctorate in theology. He began ministering in the German city of Wittenberg and soon rose to become a professor at the seminary. Despite all his accomplishments, Luther was unable to escape feelings of spiritual inadequacy and became obsessed with trying to earn God's favor and forgiveness. He would whip himself until he bled. He would crawl for miles on his knees, spend hours in prayer, sleep outside in freezing weather with no blanket. He would fast for weeks at a time, make distant pilgrimages to supposedly sacred sites and make frequent confessions all to show his devotion and atone for his sins in the hopes of earning God's blessings. So frequent were Luther's visits to confession, his abbot is reported to have told him, either commit a sin worth confessing or stop bothering me. And yet for Luther, nothing worked. Nothing worked. He later described this period of his life this way. I had lost touch with Christ the Savior and Comforter and made of him the jailer and hangman of my poor soul. In 1509, Luther made a pilgrimage to Rome, hoping to find the peace that had so stubbornly eluded him. His journey on foot included crossing the Alps, which almost killed him. Forced to halt his journey and recover his health at a monastery at the foot of the mountains, he encountered a wise monk with whom he shared his existential angst. By God's design, that monk was well acquainted with the scriptures and, it, and encouraged Luther to seek answers in the book of Habakkuk. As shocking as it sounds, the state of the Catholic Church was such that despite Luther possessing a doctorate in theology, he had never even considered reading the scriptures as a means to connect with God. But he did, and it changed everything. You see, like Luther, Habakkuk struggled with feeling that God was distant from his trials. And as he found himself in the words of Habakkuk, Luther came across chapter 2, verse 4, which seared itself into his mind and changed everything. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Luther eventually healed up and made it to Rome where he began to endure the rites of the Catholic Church, but he continued to be haunted by the verse we know as Habakkuk 2.4, as he watched men abuse themselves in various ways, such as climbing the Scala Sancta, the holy stairs, uh, until their knees bled in hopes of reducing their time in purgatory. Luther left Rome with deep spiritual discontent. His soul was troubled by what he had witnessed. He didn't have things figured out yet, but he knew that what was happening in the church did not line up with Scripture. Upon his return to Wittenberg, he was asked by the seminary to lecture on the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans. Luther had never studied Romans before, and as he began to, it became increasingly clear that what he was reading and what the church was teaching were two very different things. The light bulb turned on, 
and Luther saw the big picture. He recognized that the Christian's hope in life is found in what Jesus has done, not what we do or don't do. On October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther nailed his famous 95 theses to the door of the church in Wittenberg. They were 95 specific points of reform that he believed needed to take place in the church. Out of respect for the leadership of the church, Luther wrote his theses in Latin so that the common people would not be able to read them and gossip about his concerns. Luther raised specific issues like the selling of indulgences is wrong. How can giving the church money serve as payment for your sins against God? It doesn't line up with the scriptures. How does it make sense that you can buy someone out of purgatory? Why can't we have the Bible in common language so that everyone can read it for themselves? Luther was naive enough to believe that if the Catholic Church was shown their error in the scriptures, they would repent and change their ways. They didn't, and they still haven't. Almost immediately, Luther received a notice from the church threatening him with excommunication and giving him 60 days to retract his 95 theses or face death, likely by burning. So, in a moment of holy rebellion, Luther burned that notice. Fortunately, the Catholic Church was unable to assassinate Luther as God had granted him favor with local princes and politicians. What followed shortly was the cultural and religious revolution known as the Reformation. And make no mistake about it, I would not be teaching this study, and you would not be reading the book of Revelation for yourself had the Reformation not taken place. It was that important. Luther would go on to write hymns, including A Mighty Fortress is Our God, as well as multiple commentaries, which are still considered classics. And incredibly, he would also translate the entire Bible into German. 